When you acquire your songs through completely legal means, it's very likely that a lot of the songs will not have their metadata tag set properly in the form of ID3 tags. So to fix that, you'll need some sort of ID3 tag editor, and right now my tool of choice is just called ID3. So it seems like a very basic tool, but once you start digging into it, you see it's actually really, really powerful. If you just run it on a song without any arguments, basically it's just going to list out the tags for that song. Now, ID3 actually has a couple of different versions, and when you run this without any arguments, it's going to try to print out the ID3 V2 tags if they exist, and if they don't, it's going to go to the V1 tags, and I think if those don't exist, it'll go to the lyrics tags. So, if you want to specify which version you want to look at, and these options are very important for things we'll look at later as well, you can pass in dash 1 to look at the ID3 V1 tags, you can pass in dash 2 to look at the ID3 V2 tags, and you can pass in dash 3 to look at the lyrics 3 tags. And as you can see, this song doesn't actually have any tags set for that format. And if for whatever reason the file name has a dash in it, you can pass in dash dash and then the file name and that will actually interpret the file name correctly. This is just because if it starts with a dash, it might try to treat it as an actual option for the application rather than as a file name. So this just basically ignores that functionality. So the important thing you're going to want to do is actually modify the tag. So dash t or dash dash title will let you modify the title. So let's just say, I don't know, we'll call it test dash A is going to be the artist, so let's just call this artist, dash L will be the album name, so let's just call this album, dash N will be the track number, so we'll say this is track number one, dash Y will be the year the song was released, or I guess the year the album was released if it's in an album, so let's just say that's 2020, dash G is the genre, I'll get back to this one in just a moment, and then dash C is any extra comment that you actually want to set. Now, with dash G, this has to be one of the accepted ID3 genres. So you can go find lists of these online. So this one right here, for example, this is one that's just on Wikipedia. If you want to set a specific genre, you can use the genre name or you can use the genre number. Now, I've noticed that it seems to be one off with its numbers. So if you want to set something like, say, J-pop, you would use 147 instead of 146, even though this list is indexed from zero. So I'm guessing something in the list is missing. I'm not entirely sure what it is though. So if we go over here and set the genre to, let's go 147. So actually we don't need to put in uh, quotes for that one. And then we pass in the file name. So in this case, let's just do this one right here. And if we try to run ID3 on that song now, so that was this song right here. As we can see, that has set all of the tag information right here. And when you set the tags like that, it will set the tags for both ID3 V1 and also V2. So if we look at the V1 tags for that song, so that would be this song right here. As we can see, all of those are set. And if we do the exact same thing now with the V2 tags, those exact same tags are set. Now, V1 does have some limitations with the characters it does support, as you saw a bit earlier where it didn't show the Japanese symbols. So typically, you will want to be working with the ID3 V2 tags, but there's not really any harm in setting them both at the same time. If you do only want to set one, though, you can actually make use of those numbered options for any of the other options in the application. So if you just want to set the title for the V1 tags, pass in dash one, set the title, let's just call it new title, and then pass in the file name, so this one right here. And if we then go have a look at the ID3 V1 tags for that song, we can see the title is new title, and then if we look at the V2 tags instead, now the title is still test. Now you don't just have to work on a single file, you can also make use of file globbing as well. So let's say we want to print out all of the information about all of the mp3 files in this directory. And as you can see, it works like that. Now, this file globbing can be used with other options as well. So let's say that we have a lot of really old songs, or we just have a lot of songs that, for whatever reason, have ID3 v1 tags. What we can do is pass in the dash 1 option, so that means get all of the v1 tags, pass in the dash 2 option, so now we're going to be working with the v2 tags, and pass in the u option. So that basically means take all of the v1 tags, and then copy them over to the v2 tags. So if we then just pass in a file glob, that is going to do that on every single one of the mp3 files in this directory. Now it doesn't look like anything's done because no output is good output. So let's go and actually check on that song that we saw before. So this one right here. So now the title for this song in v2 should be new title. 
And as you can see, in V2, it is new title. If you want to do the same thing, but also go and delete all of the V1 tags, what we can do is pass in the D option along with the dash one option, and then the second part of it remains unchanged. So pass in the file glob. Basically what this is going to do is take all of the V1 tags, delete them, but also go and replace the V2 tags with those V1 tags. So if we run this now, and then have a look at any of the songs in here. Like, actually, let's go look at the V1 tags for everything. So V1 for the file glob. As you can see, none of them have metadata, but if we go and look at the V2 tags instead, all of them have the V1 metadata. If you have well-formatted file names, because say the songs are ripped from a CD, you can actually make use of positional arguments to go and set the metadata. So in this case, we have this song right here, 01.ahoy.mp3. In this case, the 01 is going to be our track number, and then Ahoy is going to be our track title. So the way that we actually specify the positions is pretty straightforward. So we have to use a file glob for this. In this case, we're gonna use a glob that looks a little something like this. Every single asterisk is going to be treated as one of the positional arguments. So in this case, we have two of them. Everything before this first dot is gonna be matched on this asterisk. In this case, this is gonna be this bit right here. And then everything after this space is gonna match on this asterisk right here. So in that case, it's gonna match on this bit right here. And the way we use the arguments is as follows. So if we wanna say position one, we do percent sign one, and then position two obviously is going to be percent sign and then two. So if we go and run this now, and then have a look at the ID3 tags for that specific song, as we're gonna see, the track number is set to one, and the title is set to Ahoy. And there's also a shorthand version of this as well. And this is done with the dash M option, which is the match mode option. So in this case, we don't actually use the asterisks. What we do is we specify what that position actually means. So in this case, this position right here is going to refer to the track number. And then this position right here is going to refer to the title. And then you obviously have to fill out the rest of the file glob the way you normally would. And if we run this again, as we're gonna see, nothing is actually going to change to this song. So we can refer to any of the existing metadata by using a percent sign where we would normally have a dash in the option name. So for example, let's say we want to refer to the title, that would be percent %t, the year, that would be percent %y, the genre, that would be percent %g, so on and so forth. And this works with all of the metadata options that we saw before. So what we can actually do with this is actually go and rename all of the files. So what we're going to do is use the id32 tags and the dash F option. So that is the format option. That's how you actually do file renaming. And what we're gonna do is let's say we name them the artist dash the title dash the genre and dot MP3. So we actually keep that. And we're gonna run this on every single one of the MP3 files. So it doesn't look like much has actually happened there, but if we go LS this out now, as we can see, everything has actually had its file name changed. And these variables can be modified as well. So let's say we want to set the title to be whatever the title is right now. So in this case, we would do percent %t, but we want it to be in lowercase instead of whatever the capitalization is right now. So to do that, after the percent sign, we put a minus, and let's go and run this on every single one of the files. And if we go and print this out now, as we're going to see, all of the files have basically the exact same name, but now they are in lowercase. So when you do the capitalization, it isn't going to fully capitalize it. It's going to capitalize each word at each space. So let's say you set the artist name correct. You have the capitalization all correct, but you forget to put a space in their name. So you can actually go and split based on a space by using the asterisk. So in this case, we're going to do percent asterisk A and then set this on this song right here. And if we have a look at the values for that now, so this song right here, as we're gonna see, the artist is now set correctly. And the last thing we have is substitution. So let's say that you have a lot of songs that are singles, so they don't actually have an album name. I typically like to go and set all of these to be single, but you might want it to be no album or empty or something like that. So this can be done very easily by just doing substitution. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go and set the year and we're gonna set the year to be itself. So if there is a year, then we're gonna use the year value. But if there's not a year, what we're gonna do is say uh, N slash A, so not applicable. And we're gonna do this on every single one of the songs. So if we just go and print out all of the tag information for all of the songs, 
as we're going to see, they all have NA as their year if they didn't already have a year. So if you want to test out this application, especially when you're working with file globbing for the first time, make sure you go and do it on a test case or you make a copy of your music directory because especially if you have thousands of songs, you don't want to go and mess up the metadata for every single one of those songs. It's not really that big of a deal for me because I only have like 15 or 20 songs, but the point still stands that it's much safer to learn what you're doing because this application does not have a way to do a dry run. So I think that's pretty much everything to say about this. Now obviously there are way more ways that these options can be combined together to do really really powerful manipulation of your ID3 tags, but I think I've given you a good baseline with a couple of really practical examples for how to actually make use of this. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, but before I go I would like to thank my supporters, so a special thank you to Joachim, Corbinian, Andrew, Craig, Nathan, Monsadar, Chico, Bento, Joseph, Peterly, Road, Tony, Brennan, Donald, John, Marek, Mikhail, Nate, Dog, Nephite, Tease, and Zilva. If you want to go and support my work, there's links down below to my Patreon, Subscribe, Star, Libre, Pay, all of that sort of stuff. I've got a podcast called Tech Over T available basically anywhere. And this channel is also available on Library and Odyssey if you want to watch it on a platform that isn't YouTube. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.